My name's John and I make videos on camping, walking and astronomy. If you like what you see in this video then please check my channel out as you may find others that interest you there. But in the meantime, let's crack on with this video. Hi folks, the uh, last week or so we've had amazingly clear skies uh, pretty well every night. Um, that's changed today as you can see, but I tried to make the most of it. So I've been back out uh, looking at my favourite constellation, Cygnus. Now, um, you'll have heard me mention Cygnus a lot in the last few videos. It's the kind of showpiece constellation of the summer, but it's now going to be moving to an area of the sky where it's not so good for me. So I think um, what I was doing last week is probably the, the end of it for, for this year, and I'll have to wait until uh, next summer. The reason I like Cygnus so much is that the Milky Way runs straight through the constellation and it lends itself to astrophotography with all sorts of different bits of kit. Um, it's really good with a, a, a DSLR camera, just a lens. You can see here, this is a, a shot of the entire region, or much bigger region actually, um, taken with a, a normal unmodified camera and a 24 millimeter lens mounted onto a um, star adventure, a star tracker. And you can see within this image, there are a number of red blotches which represent nebula. Um, there's the Elephant's Trunk Nebula, the North America Nebula, and the Butterfly Nebula. All can be seen quite easily within this picture. The target that I was aiming at last week was one that I haven't shot for a couple of years and it's the North America Nebula. Swapping the camera lens uh, from a 24mm lens to a 50mm lens displays the whole of the Cygnus constellation in a bit more detail and Cygnus really uh, appears in the sky as, as a great big cross and the kind of long part of the, of the cross represents the neck of the swan with the head at the end of it. And it's easily located because there's a very bright star called Deneb at its base. And the North America Nebula sits right next to this star Deneb. Up in the camera lens a bit more, to something like a 75mm lens, enables you to start seeing more and more detail around the star Deneb. And here you can see the Butterfly Nebula and the North America Nebula beginning to look like the North America continent after which it's named. Increasing the camera lens further to something like 100 and 25, 135 millimeter lens really does start closing in on the North American Nebula, which you can see quite clearly here and see really why it's called the North American Nebula. One of the problems you will notice here is the stars are becoming more and more prominent. Because the Milky Way runs through this region, the stars can start to dominate the image and this becomes quite difficult to try and sort out in processing. So having had lots of fun with uh, just a camera and uh, normal lenses, now we move on to my attempt at shooting the North American Nebula using a telescope. And this attempt was from about two years ago. I used a 70 millimeter refractor telescope probably has a focal length around 400 millimetres or so. And I would have taken something like uh, 20 minutes, half an hour's worth of 15 second exposures to get this. And at the time I was delighted because you can see the North America Nebula in there. But the image is uh, very much dominated by stars in this image. So for this latest attempt, I was looking at uh, trying to get a significant improvement really on what I did a couple of years ago. Uh, I used this 
60 millimeter refractor here on an EQ mount. So that was one advantage uh, that I was going to have. Second advantage is my camera is now being astro modified to be particularly sensitive to the red hydrogen gases which form the North American nebula. The other advantage that I was hoping to use over what I was doing two years ago was an improvement in my processing knowledge. I came across a program called Starnet Plus Plus and did a little bit of research on it. I could see a few uh, people on YouTube were using it. And what this software does is it enables you to take the stars out of your image, process the nebula without causing the stars to bloat and stuff, and then put the stars back a bit later on at a relatively subdued level. So I was hoping to create uh, an image that wasn't dominated so much by stars and showed you uh, more of the nebula that I was trying to get. Um, I'll probably do a video specifically about that process on this image uh, in the next month or so just to, to show you how it works but it's free so um, yeah it's uh, it's worth having a little go at. But anyway um, yeah let's uh, crack on and get on with the evening's activities. So here's the kit I used then, my Skywatcher EQM35 mount, a TS Optic 60mm photo line APO refractor and an Astro modified Canon DSLR camera. So without further ado we'll uh, flick to the evening's activities and at the end show you the image which I um, hope you like. 